Uh, Rooster Teeth has gone under. What is Rooster Teeth? I have tried. I have studied this. I have studied this like um, a high school student studying for a test. Meaning, I looked at some materials given to me the night before, and <laughs> I hope I can regurgitate this correctly before forgetting about it forever. Rooster Teeth was an anime distribution company based out of Texas that also did dubbing, and it was the employer of Vic Mignogna. If um, and they got sued by Vic Mignogna, and so did some of their employees. That was the whole Vic Mignogna lawsuit. However, they also had some other scandals, which I forgot were related to the company that Vic Mignogna was suing. Um, oh, the hamster. Okay, I can get the hamster out for you guys. So, if you remember, um, Adam and the other guy, Ryan, uh, those guys had like. Uh, like sex scandals because they were sending nudes around and cheating on their wives and doing all sorts of shit that was like not okay. Uh, and they got into trouble for that. That was also Rooster Teeth. So after the loss, I don't know. I really am kind of curious what directly led to their decline because they definitely had some issues with um, their employees. And then they had issues with the lawsuit. And I guess maybe they just got pushed under because consumers like anime people were all pro Vic and anti Rooster Teeth. Um, it was mostly YouTube slop. They made one cartoon called Ruby and they owned RVB. So did they not? I thought they did voice dubbing for anime. I thought when you say rooster teeth to me, I, I, I would assume that. These are the red B blue guys and it's funny, but yes, it's a Puma. Voice actors will be replaced by either. rooster teeth went TDF or Trump derangement syndrome after 2016. It was the weep shit. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to figure this out. Yes, I always get details right. <laughs> so, I mean, so am I, am I wrong? Okay, so Funimation was the... I thought, but I thought Vic was also employed by Rooster Teeth. Because I've I've heard I've heard Nick Riccata say Rooster Teeth before. Okay, give me a second. What is the difference between Funimation and Rooster Teeth? What is what do they do? Rooster Teeth. What do they do? Rooster Teeth was owned by Warner Bros. and Discovery. Oh, because Warner Bros. and Discovery are the same company now. They pioneered YouTube channels focusing on gaming centric content. Okay, so I imagine they just closed because they're not very good. Then. They can't push out YouTube fucking videos fast enough. Um, but they did employ the two guys that showed their dingle dingle dongas to people, right? Oh, they did machinima. Okay. Okay, okay, I got you. I figured this out. Do they have anything to do with anime, or is that just wrong? But okay, Vic was a voice actor using a character in in Ruby. Okay. Oh, and then they fired Vic. Okay, I got you. Why would I know YouTube history? I'm not a YouTuber. I'm banned from YouTube. Okay, I got you. I got you. I figured this out. I remember, I figured out how Vic Mignogna ties into it. I was not completely wrong. Don't give me that shit. Um. So instead of trying to digest this for you guys, there's a two hour long video that I'm not watching. I will never watch this. I want to let you know I'm never watching this video. Um, of this Jew extremely Jewish man explain how much rooster teeth means to him in front of two dead potted plants. Um, but there is a 30 second long clip and then Pizdek has written a explanation about every single person in this video. And I will read this instead. And this will be more factually accurate because it's written by somebody who's not an insane person. Let's see how that turns out. Everyone who's dropping the hearts in chat who have left over 700 comments on a single community group post on roosterteeth.com, thousands of messages on Discord and Reddit and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and 4chan and Kiwi Farms. Like, it's everywhere, y'all. Like, <laughs> you're everywhere. And we're trying to get all of y'all in here today to be with us. 4chan and Kiwi Farms. We just, we just made it. We're famous now. Watch this, though. Watch this guy. He has a hat. I, I can't, can I show you my mouse? I don't know if my mouse shows up. Um, it's the guy with the baseball cap on in the front row in the gray chair. Watch, watch, watch his head. And 4chan and Kiwi Farms. Like, 
He says 4chan. Kiwi farm. No, no reaction to 4chan. Kiwi farms. Kiwi farms. Like, it's every Just breaks his neck. What the fuck you say, bitch? <laughs> uh, great. Um, all right. Uh, the fat lady mentions Kiwi Farms once and never again. I'm assuming someone off camera points out not to do that again. Another thing notable I picked up is the old fag who I will keep referring to as such because I can't remember his name. Sitting in the red chair immediately turns his head uh, at the mention of both 4chan and Kiwi Farms. Wait, did the guy in the red? Everywhere, y'all. Oh, he does. He does. Kiwi Farms. Him like, too. It's everywhere, y'all. He also is like, what the fuck? Like, what about the fat guy farms. in the back? Like, it's everywhere, y'all. Yeah, the fat guy in the back also does it. Look, there's several people. And 4chan and Kiwi Farms. Like, it's everywhere, y'all. Well, okay, those three men, um, the fat guy in the back left and the two guys in the front right also turn their head. Like, what? Did you, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> why, would you, why would you do this? Why would you do this to us? Um, cool. Trevor Collins, husband of Barbara Dunkelman, known for being the one neutered who led to the death of Achievement Hunter, Rooster's best YouTube adventure, and to go into the amazing talent that surrounds him, uh, which has led to the death of the company. Okay. Barbara, who I is the Dunkelman. Uh, Dunkelman was a fan since 11 years old, so she states. She has never worked another job outside of Rooster Teeth. This is a recurring theme with the majority of the staff here who have never done any production outside of voice acting. In her case, only a few OnlyFans shoots. And this links to an OnlyFans.com page if you want to see this woman naked, apparently. Why do they do this? Is this like a... Do they, they live in Toronto, right? Is Rooster Teeth the woman... Oh, wait, no. Is, I said Texas. Where is Rooster Teeth located? Austin, Texas. I was right about that. So this is a random woman in Texas who does OnlyFans for whatever reason. Okay, excellent. Thank you for your contribution to Women's Day. Uh, she was constantly made fun of in sexual manner and rumored to have gotten her position by being ran through by most of the male staff. She then goes to spill over the fact that reality is finally hitting and that her freeloading job of running podcasts and her crappy voice acting is finally done. <laughs> Stagelin, whose name I can't recall either, going on a speech about everyone being friends and helping each other. Uh, old Fag, who is also uh, a, a nice Jewish man, but Old Fag also works, speaks about how he's happy that many of his people have shown up, with Gus, one of the founders, being an exception due to a medical, medical exam, which Barbara attempts to interject by going on a joke about getting his butt checked. This joke is taken rather awkwardly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Chat, buttholes, am I right? Well, she's a Canadian. What's with Canadians and being prostitutes? Jack Patillo going on next. We're confused why there were yellow hearts in his chat while Barbara spoke as to be reminded that she did voice acting for Ruby, which I'm going to continue to pronounce as Ruby. Uh, Yang hints the yellow hearts. Uh, so apparently that's a character reference I don't understand. So this guy who is involved intimately in the company which produced the show called Ruby doesn't understand a character reference about the show that the woman voice acted for. Okay. He awkwardly scratches his neck for a moment of being called a founder as he was only an early hire. Jack goes to mention how he's upset people calling his only job dead and buried and reminding everyone that there's a block function on Zitter. Yes, he has always been a thin-skinned cunt. Um, reminding haters to support creators, otherwise they'll be gone. Otherwise, Also worth noting that the Rooster Teeth exec went on to say that their subscription service membership was not enough to keep the bills paid anymore. Jack then states that he wants to steal an item that belonged to Warner Bros., uh, extra life will still be occurring from what Jack also states. I assume it was another one of their productions. So Warner Brothers is, is just going to absorb that and put that into a different studio. Um, and then apparently they also want to keep doing podcasts. I feel like there's enough podcasts. You know what I mean? Is there not enough podcasts in the world right now? But everybody wants to start a podcast because it's like the easiest thing in the world. You know, you just cram shit. I mean, my job is particularly easy because everyone forgives me for being a retard because um, in some ways it's endearing when it's not too annoying. And then it's also everyone kind of understands that this is like a flimsy excuse to read things from the site that is otherwise unprofitable and try to try to hold my hand and guide me through the content um, because I, I can only pay attention to so much. Uh and then, but for most people, it's like you have to actually be interesting and engaging, <laughs> which I struggle with. <laughs> no, few people get the benefit of the doubt that I do when it comes to the, the things I talk about. Um, so it's very, I mean, if you're just like a Joe Blow and you want to do a podcast about fucking fly fishing or something, it's going to be really hard. You have to be like an actual fly, you have to have like 20 years experience to make your fly fishing 
Uh, your fishing story is interesting enough. People actually want to listen to you talk about fishing. But I mean, it's a it's cushy. It's nice. You can do it from anywhere. You can even do it from your own your own uh, Slavic center block apartment if you so choose. However, your mileage may vary depending on uh, how well the um, the the burger shop next to you uh, how how well the Wi Fi is working that day. Fishing stream soon. I maybe maybe I'll catch a fish for everybody one day. Uh, John or Chris Demarius uh, is that guy, I assume. He joined Rooster Teeth a decade prior to his own surprise and managed to last as long as he did. Is often the gesture of the office. Chris has been writing shows in their movie Laser Team while also having been the honor of the topic of the last ever Rooster Teeth animated adventure about how his dog, who he named Booger, ate his hair AirPods. I feel like that's a common story. I feel like most dogs eat those stupid fucking things. If you, dude, I don't understand the appeal of any kind of audio equipment that does not have a wire. Like, I understand the convenience of having, because you can, like, walk around your room, but it sucks, and then it falls on the ground and breaks. That's my experience with, uh, with headsets that are, like, fancy and, and Bluetooth or whatever. And then they have, like, a delay. Just a nightmare. Uh, next is Armando. He definitely looks like an Armando. One of the DEI... <laughs> Here she took over the that's very rude. <laughs> yeah, um, his name is Armando. He's DEI, of course. Took over the Rooster Teeth main podcast and ran him to the ground. He has no wiki page, which shows how little anyone at the Rooster Teeth fandom even cares about his presence, despite how desperately the execs shoved him out into the podcast. And then Patrick Salazar, who has a cool name, goes on to reminisce about how he was able to help see probably forced to volunteer for staff at the RT Expo and was shocked, shocked to be a fan who even knew who he was and who thought he had left. Uh, another stagehand talks, but it's unamusing. Then Larry, oh God, Larry looks like a gamer, if I'm, if I'm being real. Uh, who knows what Kiwi Farms is, by the way. Say hi to Larry. Hi, Larry. Uh, Larry was in charge of Let's Roll and began to immediately break down in tears. His story is not amusing, but his inability to hold back the tears over losing his only job is. Jack takes notice to the fact that the camera is zooming in and recording their breakdown, to which one member on the camera panel takes the blame for. <laughs> Dude, cameraman, I think, like, if a good cameraman has, like, a emotionless, psychopathic understanding of what a good shot is, so... Like when he sees this guy crying over his job being lost, it doesn't matter that he knows him. It doesn't matter that he knows it's like probably inappropriate or embarrassing to zoom up on. His cameraman brain knows that is the shot. Zoop. And he zooms in. 4K detail. I can see the tears glistening, running down his cheek, wetting the skin underneath as it rolls by. Excellent shot, cameraman. Good job. Invisible narrative power. Exactly. Like the Nightcrawler. Exactly. Next up are Sammy and Will, the brothers. Two more DEI hires who are effectively the kids caught in the middle of the divorce. They both sit awkwardly as everyone around them breaks down in tears, seemingly uninvested in why they were hired less than six months ago for dark dog bark. Barbara, hoping to score brownie points, reminds the DEIs they are very special. Barbara then goes on to say we're all a family, and Trevor backs up this often red flag corporate statement and attempts to continue the progressive bullshit message. I'm glad the brothers are making it out alive. They're not getting. They're not getting caught up. They're not crying on camera. There's no zoom in on this guy's face. Like, look at how much he cares. Because that's what. So spoiler: he doesn't give a shit. Next is Carrie Shawcross, along with Miles, helped write the terrible script for Ruby. Um, and as a part of the issues that plague the Rooster Teeth animation studio, he goes on to say he will want to finish Ruby's blo broken plot and hope someone out there willing to fund this never-ending trash fire. Barbara attempts to pull the let's be positive card despite everyone around her breaking down over the loss of their 10 year plus job. And John Rinzinger speaks next. He goes on to talk about how supportive everyone is when they finally came out of the closet. Oh, great. Hey, everybody. I get fucked in the ass. Um, I shit on people's dicks. Um, it's welcome. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, John. You're such an inspiration to us. Uh, interesting note that when the, uh, the fact that for some time during Don John's divorce, <laughs> you ruined your marriage, you might have kids involved that are going to hate you for the rest of your life. I'm so brave. I'm so brave, John. <laughs> um, 
his next his ex-wife used a facebook page in the divorce proceedings and turns out to have been a fan created a page supporting a gay fanfic pairing between john ringlinger and blaine gibson and after some coercion from jack and most of the staff jeff who has been off camera and crying finally steps on stage once again jeff is forced to face the consequences of his own actions he immediately breaks down saying that he no longer has the stature to face any, any more company turmoil which is why he stood off camera damn i don't know who this guy is is he mentioned before and then he walks off stage no so this guy is just like who is he i'm kind of i'm kind of curious because jeff seems very important and he seems to internalize a lot of uh a lot of guilt with this this company chat let's take a look real quick <clears throat> oh shit! i hit the browser and left the mic unmuted and coughed directly into the into the mic excellent i'm very sorry There's a there's a fucking eyeglass button and a and a uh, mute button and I mix them up. All right, Jeff. Rooster to you. Jeff Ramsey, American voice actor. Uh voice actor, film producer, and internet personality. Spouses Sarah divorced in 2005 ramsey divorced in 2018 and then emily uh, married in 2023 with one children three marriages one children very interesting so i guess oh dude he's been working on um rooster teeth since 2003 as the voice of dexter griff Okay, so this guy has been like in Rooster Teeth his entire fucking life. He probably started Rooster what was that twenty, literally twenty one years ago. He's forty three, so at the age of twenty one or twenty two, he started publishing internet videos called Red versus Blue, and that's all he's done. That's all he's done. Oh, he didn't even. So he's the founder of the company. He started this as like a, a like a twenty years old. He's been doing that his entire life. He fucked up everything, and he internalizes all of that, and he knows that it's all his fucking fault. And he doesn't know what he's going to do. He's on his third marriage. He has one kid. He's done nothing but voice act, red versus blue. And now he's going out into the world uh, unsure of what, what <laughs> where he can lend his capabilities and what they are. That's brutal. Yeah, I'd be off camera too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, the most solemn moment of the entire stream is everyone sits while Jeff attempts to speak, realizing the company of over 21 years is dead and there is nothing else to be done. I'm pretty sure the old fag is talking about the haters or maybe Kiwi Firms, but at a point I grew tired of listening to him and I skipped it. <laughs> Carrie goes off to suck Jeff's dick for a moment and mentions that Something strikes a chord. Despite Carrie choosing to work for RT Animations, him and Jeff remain friends. It's strange as they didn't seem to apply that to Matt Bragg, who attempted to work for Achievement Hunter up until he was first forced into a part-time role. Barbara then schlops Jeff for a minute with a very hearty I love you, followed by thanks for taking the criticism for us, likely referring to when Mika Burton came out with how the company ignored her harassment, which Barbara verified happened under Jeff's watch. The fat lady who mentioned Kiwi Farms goes on to say she met Jeff at 14. His physical reaction is rather telling with how uncomfortable it was for this to be brought up, likely in light of Ryan's fan fucking. It also amusingly highlights how often Rooster Teeth seems to hire fans to do their job over experienced professionals. She goes on to state, despite the multiple mergers and buyouts, she stuck it out to the end for what little it was worth. She goes on to mention the multiple websites for fans to talk in and leaves out Kiwi Farms. Barbara goes on to mention Bernie and Matt Holm and how they went to hire Barbara fresh out of college. Jeff goes on to mention that Gus left as his left arm and describes Matt and Bernie as to be less liked by him. Likely some scorn from how Bernie left when the good going was good and Matt was able to duck responsibility due to illness. Left out of the mention of the founders is Joel Heyman, who voiced Caboose. Joel was fired from his final after voicing his final lines for RVB. Despite them treating him like shit in the last moments of the company, he remained amicable and wished the best for everyone who lost their job. Why was Joel Heyman fired? Chat, elucidate me. Was he fired for sexual misconduct? Because he wasn't mentioned in the other one. Oh, there's a... Okay, hold up. I was let go from the company. I was laid off after making tens of millions for others. Then when I had to go to healthcare, when I started, I had no healthcare 401k... 
So what exactly? Why was he fired? He was laid off in quotes. It seems he was ousted from Mr. Teeth for his inappropriate response to the Black Lives Matter movement and his erratic behavior. This includes him rooting for John McCain's cancer to kill him and allegedly posting right-wing conspiracy theories. Quote, do bricks carry COVID-19? Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so he was let go for being too based. Okay. I see now. I see why everyone is so angry, but uh, he doesn't seem to give a shit. I'm sure he's doing, I'm sure out of all these people, he's going to do the best. Uh, Kerry goes on to give Monty Ullum the one and only mention the entire stream, despite Monty being the creator of Ruby and sole reason why Kerry had a job at Rooster Teeth. Mis miscellaneous notes. Animated projects that have been in the works are still coming out, which includes Resby Blue Respira Restoration, Camp Camp, and other Ruby content. Fat Lady tells the Janians to get ready to sweep it up. The chat on our website has not has not been stretched out like this since 2020. That's a very stretched out, like something's being used, so it's being stretched out. It's a very hypersexual way to describe a common function. Apparently, the stream was only meant to be an hour, but went past that. It's hard to sum up your entire career in an hour. Um, cool. Sucks to be them, I guess. Thank you very much, Pizza Deck, for this write up. Actually, can I? I'm going to give him a trophy. I'm going to give him one of the only reactions that still gives a notification. Boom. Well, what a contribution, chat. What a contribution. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.